diaper bag essentials. Um, if you're going with little kids, these are things I definitely think you should pack. Definitely pack water. Um, Disneyland and Disney World, as you both know, they're in Florida and they're in California. These are hot states. So during the day, especially in Florida, I found it's going to be hot and you're going to need a lot of water and Disney Park water is not cheap so I would just bring your own water bottle. They don't care if you bring in water so bring in your own water. Um, bring a change of clothes especially for your little ones. Not so much for you, that's not a big deal. But definitely for your little ones because it's hot at these parks and they do have a little like water areas that the kids can go splash in and everything. It's a great way for them to cool off but they might be uncomfortable sitting in the wet clothes later, so definitely bring them a change of clothes so that if they get hot, they can go enjoy the splash pad and then they can put on dry clothes and be comfortable afterwards. Bring a sweater. Um, Florida wasn't that big of a deal, but California, it's like, it's hot during the day, but then at night it really cools down and I found that especially in the uh, cooler months, like when we went in December, it was hot during the day, but then at night it got really cold and I needed a sweater. I was really, really cold. Um, thankfully, we had brought a sweater and a blanket for Ian and he used both, but I didn't have anything. So definitely bring a sweater for you and bring a sweater for your littles and maybe even pack a little blanket or something in the stroller. An umbrella, this is strange. Now, if you're going to Disney World in Florida, bring an umbrella because it just rains there without any warning. It could be like bright and sunny, not a cloud in the sky and then psh, so bring an umbrella. If you're going to be in California, I still say bring a little travel umbrella because the sun is brutal and you just, yeah, it's hot. And especially when you are trying to enjoy one of those parades and you're just sitting there and you're baking and you want to be one of those lucky people that finds a little patch of shade, but there's like people clumped up in that little patch of shade. And bring an umbrella and then you have shade wherever you go. A wristlet. Bring a little wristlet that fits your ID, your credit card, your money, and your cell phone because um, when you go, when you want to go on rides, a lot of times they won't even let you bring your stroller to stand in line. They have stroller parking areas and if you're packing a lot of like food and clothes and blankets and sweaters and blah blah blah, blah you don't want to like have this big bag while you're waiting in line and then um, having to hold it while you're on the ride and everything. So I would leave all of that stuff with your stroller but I would pack all of your important stuff in a little wristlet and so when you go to get in line you can just bring your little wristlet and so you have all of your important stuff with you. A camera, that's a no-brainer. Bring a camera! You're going to Disney and Disney parks are not cheap so if you have saved up to go to a Disney park you are going to want to bring back some memories with you so don't forget your camera. Okay, so keepsakes. Here is one little tip that some people don't know about. Disney will give you these free little pins I'll insert a picture in case you can't see it, but this one says happy anniversary. Um, when we went this last time, we were it was a surprise for Ian, but it was also um, us celebrating our eight year wedding anniversary. So Disney will give you these little pins. Um, when you first walk into a Disney park, either whether you're going to Disneyland, Disney World, or California Adventure, when you first walk in, there's usually like a little information type building kiosk thing. And just go in there and ask them for a pin. Tell them what you're celebrating. You could just say, I'm just celebrating, because they do have a pin that just says, I'm celebrating. And that pin's really, really cute. It's got like a lot of the Disney characters on it. If it's your um, anniversary, they give you this one. It's got Mickey and Minnie, and it says, happy anniversary. They have a birthday one. They, If you're taking your kids for the first time, they have a my first visit pin. They have a um, just married pin, and all of the pins are free. You can ask for as many as you like, and they are all free. So that's a really cute keepsake. You can put these on your backpack or something like that, and you didn't have to pay for it. Another reason you might want some of these is because the Disney people, they look for these pins, and sometimes you get special treatment because of these pins. Um, with this anniversary one, mostly every single person told us happy anniversary. No matter where we went, on rides, on shows, when we went to go buy food, everybody wished us a happy anniversary and that was really, really sweet. Um, especially with Ian's first time wearing his first time pin. We didn't actually put it on him because this is sharp, it's a pin, um, but we did put it on his stroller so they could see it. And the characters spent a little bit more time with us getting that perfect picture because it was his first time. I found I got the most perks when we went for our anniversary, not our anniversary, um, it was our honeymoon. We went for our honeymoon to Disney World 
and uh, let's see, we went to a show and they had like the very first row had, um, it was reserved seating. Um, so we just kind of sat in the back because by the time we had got to the show it was kind of filled up. So we were sitting in the very back of a Beauty and the Beast show. Well, a lady saw our pin and came and got us and told us that we could sit in the front row in the reserved seating because we were celebrating our honeymoon and we were just married. So that was awesome. Um, there was a mariachi band playing somewhere and when we were passing them, they saw our pins, they stopped us, they surrounded us and they all played just for us. And um, they took my bag and set it down and they were like, dance, dance. And I was kind of I'm shy, so I was kind of like, oh, people are looking, but I still did it, and now that I think about it, it was a great experience. You know, we're dancing in the middle of a Disney park while a mariachi band plays just for us. Um, so yeah, definitely go get yourself a pin because sometimes you get little, oh, sorry, I forgot one more. When we were on our honeymoon and we had our pin, um, a Disney guy just, he saw our pin and he was like, oh, come right over here. And he took us to this building where, um, he gave us a certificate. It was a certificate of marriage from Disney World. And um, so that was awesome. He like he was like a calligrapher, so he did our names like all Disney looking. And it was like a marriage certificate from Disney. And then um and then he put us on the phone and we each got a call from Mickey and Minnie wishing us a happy honeymoon. And it was so sweet. So definitely go get yourself these free pins. They're worth it. They're fun. And it's a cute little keepsake. Another keepsake I would say are hats. You must get some ears. If you're only going to buy one thing in the gift shop, get some ears. Because they're just, they look awesome in pictures. I mean, come on. Go to Disney World. Be goofy. Get some ears. Um, this one I like. I like the headbands more for uh, me because I don't really like wearing like hats. It gives me hat hair. But cute little headband like this one. It's just a, it's just a headband. And then it has this little hat. Neil got a hat and I got this one to match him so that we would be cute together in pictures. So we both had little Disney ears on. And then Ian, we got him the classic. If you have a little kid, you must get them the classic, which is just this little kind of a cat with ears. And then you can get their name embroidered on the back. And this cost just a little bit extra. I think this was like $7 maybe extra. And I think the hat was maybe $14. Um, the hats are not that expensive. I think they're all under $20. But definitely get yourself some ears so that you and your family will look super cute pictures. If you're only going to get one thing, get some ears. Another tip, if you're going to be planning to get things in the gift shops, definitely get them at the end of your day when like before you're going to go home. Don't get them at the beginning. It's tempting because when you first walk into the parks, that's where the gift shops are. And so you want to go in and you want to buy toys and stuffed animals and things like that. But then you're going to have to carry them around with you or leave them in your stroller and you know you just don't want somebody to take them or something like that. So I would definitely just wait till the end when you're leaving and you're going to go home and then go ahead and go get your toys and stuffed animals and keepsakes and things like that. So you don't have to carry them around, worry about them breaking, worry about you losing them or worry about somebody taking them. If you are pregnant, work it girl. I'm telling you when I was pregnant we got some great seats at the world, wait was it the world of color? Yes, it was the world of color show. I told you that show fills up fast and we did not go early and scout out seats but they saw that I was pregnant and Neil went up to one of the employees, told them that I was pregnant and they do have reserved seating and sometimes they don't fill it. Um, it's mostly for um, like people with wheelchairs might need it but they have a lot of them so don't worry. Um, or people with just any kind of disability or hardship or if you are pregnant, that's what they're also there for. So if you're very, if you're small pregnant, if you're newly pregnant, you're not going to get one of these seats and don't even try it. But if you are fully pregnant, um, they do have some seating areas there so that the prego mommies can sit. They will not let uh, the rest of your party sit down. So if your husband's with you, he will not be allowed to sit in those seats, at least from our experience. I mean, you might have a different experience. They might let him sit down. But when we went, um, they were pretty strict on those seats being for handicapped, disabled, or pregnant people. Um, so e Neil was allowed to be in the reserved area with me, so he did get a good viewing, but he just had to stand behind me. So that was fine. He didn't mind standing, and I got a seat, which was awesome because 
yeah, I was just tired. <laughs> um, but yeah, so definitely, if you are fully pregnant, ask if you can sit in the reserved seating because that's what it's for. Ask strangers to take pictures for you because you do not want to be the only one taking pictures and then you're not in any of the pictures. Um, also, if you and your husband are taking turns, it's always just going to be you and the kid or your husband and the kid. And you definitely want to have some family pictures of all of you together. So definitely ask the people around you, either Disney employees, they're always willing to take pictures for you, or just any of the other guests at the park, ask them to take pictures for you. Chances are they're probably going to ask you to take one in return. So there you go. You each of you get something out of it. So definitely ask strangers to take pictures so that your whole family can be in the picture together because you're going to treasure those pictures a lot more. So when you're buying your tickets to go to Disney, you have to decide whether you want to go to one park or if you want to get park hopper. At Disney World, I believe there was like there was the animal area or I don't I don't remember all the areas, but we had park hopper so we we got to go to all the parks, so that was awesome. But if you're going to Disneyland and you're trying to decide if you're only going to go to one park, I say go to Disneyland. It's the classic, and we love the Disneyland side. Here. Oh, you don't want to sit? Okay. Um, so I suggest going to Disneyland over California Adventure if you're only going to go to one park. Um, California Adventure has Cars Land, A Bug's Life. Um, there's like a kind of a fair area. They have roller coasters, a Ferris wheel. Um, there's like a lot of um, like carnival mm. fair type games. So if that's what you're into, go for it. But mm. if you're going for a true Disney experience and you're only going to go to one park, I say go to Disneyland. Um, if you can swing it, I would definitely do a park hopper though and go more than one day. If you're only going to go to one day, I would only get I would only get a pass to go to one park because they're both so big, especially Disneyland, and you want to see as much as you can, so I would only get a pass to one park. It'll save you money and you won't feel like you're rushing to see everything. Um, so yeah, if you're only going for one day, I would just get one park hopper pass, and if I had to choose, I would choose Disneyland over California Adventure. But if you can swing it and you can swing more than one day, get a park hopper, go to both parks and enjoy. So those are all my tips and tricks and advice for um, your Disneyland trip. If you have any you want to add, go ahead and add them to the comments below so anybody watching this video can see them. Um, was there any food I missed that you enjoy? Leave that down below. Do you have a favorite ride? Add that down below too. And uh, if you know any other Disney secrets like these little pins, put that down below too. Maybe next time I go to Disney, I'll, I'll know something else to try out. But other than that, we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.